This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, she is an 8 year old lady presenting with lens induced glaucoma, the phacomorphic variant. She was highly symptomatic with severe pain when she presented to a hospital. After treating her with anti-glaucoma medications and steroids, she was taken up for surgery. On the day of surgery, she received IV mannitol. Her pressure was 18 before shifting to the OR. There are multiple challenges to deal with this situation. The visibility will not be great because of the corneal edema. The antechamber is extremely shallow. Rex is going to be challenging because of the intumescent lens and nucleus could still be dense. The surgery is being done under posterior subtenance anesthesia. Two paracentesis incisions are created. While doing the side port incision, the blade touches the iris, just demonstrating the extreme shallowness of the antechamber. The capsule is stained with trypan blue. Dispersive OVD is used to coat the endothelium and also deepen the chamber. The main 2.8 mm incision is created. The capsule is punctured with a bent needle. There is some aggressive fluid cortex which results in some amount of passive decompression. I am using a forceps to do the primary minirexis. The iris is flabby and is trying to come out of the incision. The dispersive OVD is used to put it back in place. I'm using my phaco tip to decompress the bag. The dialer is used to nudge the nucleus to release some of the trapped cortex beneath the nucleus. In a couple of moments, a decent amount of decompression can be achieved. During decompression, I'll be using the settings of the epinucleus, which is very low power and moderate flow rate and vacuum. Once decompression has been adequate, I need to perform the secondary large orexis. A tangential cut is given using a micro scissors and then using the forceps a secondary larger axis is completed. The iris is prolapsing through the main wound so I use the side port to complete the axis. I feel that the nucleus is relatively quite dense. I create a small trench with a couple of strokes of phaco. The idea is to get a good grip on the core of the nucleus. I bury my phaco tip deep into the nucleus and a vertical chop is performed followed by lateral separation. While performing the chop, I make it a point to lift up the nucleus a little bit with the phaco tip itself so that during the chopping and lateral separation maneuvers, stress exerted in the posterior capsule and the bag is minimized. The first heminucleus is divided into three fragments. Time to emulsify them. Since there's a lot of crowding in the inner chamber, I need to ensure that there is minimal turbulence and chatter during fragment emulsification. Here I'm using the burst mode of energy delivery to give better control over the emulsification process. Of course, the amount of energy delivered has to be controlled by the foot pedal. The time to replenish the OVD dispersive OVD goes in first followed by HPMC The flabby iris is trying to come out it's gently repositioned back with the aid of OVD the heminucleus is divided and I need to emulsify this fragment now and I want to emulsify it at a posterior plane that is at the level of the pupillary plane so that I can protect the corneal endothelium which already is slightly compromised i'm keeping one eye on the fragment which is dancing around the tip the fragment occasionally rubbing against the pupil is a reassuring sign that the plane of emulsification is all right time to reinject the ovd into the eye well this step of injecting ovd after emulsification of each fragment slows down the procedure considerably but believe me it's truly worth it the last fragment is emulsified in a very controlled manner the bevel of the tip is facing sideways so that the entire surface area of the lumen of the tip is exposed to the fragment and also note my second instrument is always held on top of the fragment being emulsified as a guard so finally the emulsification is done the little cortex which is remaining is aspirated out The intraocular lens is implanted into the bag. OVD is removed, but the flabby iris is still trying to come out to the main incision. 
So I go back and decide to suture the main incision with a single radial tenovicral suture. The side ports are hydrated, chamber is well formed, the eye is soft, that's it the case is done. On the first day this is how the eye looks, not a pretty sight, corneal edema but more importantly a lot of inflammation in the inner chamber. But this is to be expected in an eye which was having severe uh, raised intraocular pressure and severe inflammation for the last many days before undergoing surgery. But over a period of the 10th day, the inflammation has subsided considerably, the cornea is cleared up, the intraocular pressure is normal now and the uncorrected vision is 636. Well, this is because the frontus picture shows a pale optic nerve head, uh, probably suggestive of the severe ischemia which it has suffered during the period of sustained raised intraocular pressure in the preoperative phase. That's it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.